I was influenced by what was happening at the miners' strike and how they were being treated. You have to go there to understand what I'm talking about. You know, you've got to imagine there's a mountain, there's fuck all on this mountain, but a mine at the top, and they built a village, a town on this mountain, and then they shut the mine, and this town dies. You know what I mean? And they're fighting for their jobs, and what they were doing up there, the police were, was <coughs> not, not legal. And I took it upon myself to, which went hard, you know, I'm not looking for no fucking OBE over or, or medal, but I've got two transits twice a month. I've got all of my doormen, which I had 500 doormen, to bring down a bag of grub that I was going to take up to the miners that were trapped in the house. I used to get 12 doormen and a load of food. We'd go up into the valleys and drop off all these foods to all these different villages. They used to swap us. They used to swap us donkey jackets and we used to go and help the miners fight the old bill, right? Which was fucking... I know it's wrong. I know. But watching the police ride into crowds of people with the big bat... I've, I've still got one of the batting jail horses smashing ladies round the head because all the men were down London picketing the coal board. And they, and they were just throwing bits of coal at me. It was, it was awful. Like, you know, you, I was, you felt that you were doing it for a cause. You understand what I mean? You felt you were doing it for a cause. And in that mayhem, I met Bernie, who was a smoking miner, yeah? You know, it's a different kind of man that oh, for hundreds of years it's been in your blood that what you do for a normal everyday living as a job, as a bloke, is you go somewhere and go a mile underground and start digging for 12 hours, and every single day there's rock falls, digging your mate out, running out of breath, gas it all day as a job, a normal everyday fucking job. That's what you're doing. So by the time that man comes home and goes wash and goes down the pub, he ain't a normal bloke. You ain't gonna frighten him by going, hey, I've got a knife. Oh, there's a different geezer, right? It's a, it breeds another kind of man. But I was helping him out and we was going around doing all this thing every other weekend. And it was like, you know, there's 12 of you in a transit all tooled up. By the time you get all the music's blaring, you want to go to a like, fucking Afghan, you know what I mean? Come on! Right? Anyway, one of us got caught up there and then they said they was bringing in mercenaries, so we couldn't go up there. So because it was so much good fun, we used to go out there with the food, drop the food off, and then on, on, on the way home, there's a motorway where you can go across the... There's a motorway that you can go across the top, right? So we used to park our car in the car park going that way, all walk over, to, over the thing into the toilets on the motorway near Wales. And, and in the motorway um, service stations, I don't know if I should say this, we used to get into, used to drive, go out to Wales, come back on the video this side of the M4, run over there and wait till the coaches came in because there was coaches of policemen going up there. They were getting three times their daily money. I fucking couldn't believe it. They were all driving up in coaches going on a bus on holiday. Just like the 12 of us in the... The 12 of us in the transit all going, Whoa. right? There's 52 of them in the coach, and nine coaches all going, Whoa. right? Or the same as us, no different. Right? I'm not having a go at them about it, but I know where, the, I know where, you, where you were in your head. Because I was the same going out to a my lot. I can't imagine what that's like when there's coaches will be, but they was in a fucking proper, let's give it to a mood all the time, right? So we used to go over there to the service station, see the coaches come in with the police, knew that the very first thing they did was, all get out of the coaches and go straight into the toilet and then go and eat. So we're getting all the cubicles with the doors shut, with the bats, right? All of us all fucking nine cubicles going, <laughs> you know, like waiting for them all to come in. You hear them all coming in and going, and you hear about 10 come in, and then as soon as someone come out, they made a noise. They started to, Rah! right? So you knew when to go. And at the waiting of when they, you heard the first two come in, then there's four, then there's a, the waiting standing on the seat so they can't see your feet. Standing on the fucking seat, you and they're like, <laughs> go. And it was just fucking, it just it, it should never be the move. Just so everyone that looked policeman who just got smashed, ran out of there, ran across the thing, ran across the thing into your own ring, and was down the M4 before they got plaster. 